Astral Planes, the 19th expansion for Stellaris, is here. And the question is, are the new astral actions, events, technologies, and lore enough to justify spending your hard-earned cash? First of all, whilst playing this, you really get the feeling that this is Ancient Relics 2 Electric Boogaloo. The astral terrors that spawn the events for the expansion are very similar to the dig sites and function in a kind of similar way. You enter a site, you wait for an event, you click on what you want to do and wait for the next stage. And whilst it's not nearly as linear as dig sites, you do have some degree of splitting narrative, which is something that I really, really enjoy. Paradox has also released a little flowchart to properly illustrate how these tears differentiate from the dick sites and I'm really glad that they've iterated on the concept to make it more like my favorite event chain in the game which is of course the enigmatic fortress however the underlying system is still the same as an ancient relics and this is a general theme for the expansion it firmly bases itself on existing systems without really bringing anything new to the table mechanically the aforementioned dick sites is a clear example of this. But astral actions, whilst at first glance being new and exciting, is a mix of existing systems. Sure, you've got a new resource, but it's spent in the same way as before. Astral actions in particular are mostly either new abilities or shortcuts on existing things. Let's take the hyper relay action. For a price, you get to instantly build a new Hyper Relay, whilst Cool takes away a rather important economic decision from the player. Do I spend these alloys and crystals on better mobility within my empire, or do I wait on this number to tick up and get one for free instantly? Get free science, get new tech, summon an unbidden fleet, most of these actions are here to make life easier and not necessarily more interesting. But not all of it is doom and gloom. The rifts themselves are a love letter to science fiction. Solaris has really been struggling with keeping the exploration part of the game interesting for years now, and the rifts add some really interesting mid-game stories for you to enjoy. There are about 30 of them in total, and you won't really encounter all of them in the same game. All of them are great explorations of the concept of alternate realities, dimensions, and planes, each with interesting stories and narratives. Some also expand on the existing Stellaris lore, so if you're into that sort of stuff, then this is pretty much for you. Then there is of course the new relics, there is 8 of them, all of which add interesting bonuses and ideas. There are tons of new empire modifiers as rift outcomes, as well as a new mid-game challenge for you to overcome. It spawns at the center of the galaxy by the way, so finally something is populating that place. The new Rift World Origin seems to be designed to interact with the features of the expansion rather than really giving you an interesting new way to play. It spawns Rifts faster, allowing you to explore more inside the planes, which is a little bit disappointing. If I had to compare it to any other Origin, I would say it's very similar to, say, Galactic Doorstep. The civics are very cool. Hyperspace specialty gives you additional visibility on the galactic map and faster ships, as well as adding up to 10 stability in any system that you have a hyperlane registrar building in, as long as you have the right leaders. Dimensional Worship is a lighter version of the Rift World Origin, generating more rifts within your territory, as well as having access to a starbase building that spits out 10 unity per month. Dark Consortium is extremely powerful. It allows you to get access to dark matter at the start of the game, as well as its related technologies without having to interact with fallen empires. You can generate dark matter pretty much off the get-go, which means you'll never have any economic issues ever again. You also get four additional powerful edicts, and making Dark Consortium one of the best, if not the best, civic within the game in terms of power. Finally, Sovereign Guardianship gives you a new type of army, a new starbase module, and is more of a challenging empire type that really leans into having as many pop as possible on as little planets as possible. This is mainly due to planets counting double to Empire Sprawl, whilst Pops and District having reduced impact. Large planets with loads of Pops are the way to go here, so make sure you get your nihilistic beams ready because it's time to start harvesting some Pops for your worlds. It also gets an edict that turns influence into unity, which makes sense because you won't be spending a lot of it, because this is essentially a tall build. So, with all of this, 
is astral planes worth your hard earned cash? At first, I would say yes, loads of new events, content, but then I see the price point of $19.99 and or local equivalent, and I'm taking somewhat aback. Are you telling me you want to charge the price of a major expansion for what is essentially a content pack that doesn't really introduce new mechanics? I mean, that's a pretty hard sell for me. I mean, it's the price of Overlord. Uh, Ancient Relic sells for a tenner. First Contact sells for 15. Sure, I understand the cost essentially uh, funds the patch, which in this particular case is quite extensive, but 20 bucks is a lot for what you get here. Unless you are a diehard fan and want more Stellaris, just wait on a sale. It's a fun, solid addition to the Stellaris lineup with some fun new civics and functions, but it's too expensive for what it is. I hope this is giving you a little bit more clarity about uh, Astral Planes as well as how it sits within the Stellaris DLC constellation. If you want to see more videos like this, feel free to give the channel a subscribe. But in the meantime, we'll see you out in space. I'll be playing a little bit more with Astral Planes over the next few weeks. And you're invited to join me on that journey. If you're not sure whether or not you want to buy Astral Planes and you want to see a little bit of content slash footage of it, feel free to click on the link in the video right now. We'll take you to my full playthrough of the Rift World Origin. We'll see you there. In the meantime, this has been the review for Astral Planes for Stellaris. My name has been Acebeck, and until next time, take good care of yourselves and as always, eat shutter.